Chidi the Podcast, presented by Just Chidi Productions. Hi there, I'm your host, Fondue. In the criminal cheese system, crimes involving cheese are considered especially heinous. What? In the world of dairy, the researchers who investigate these crimes are members of an elite squad they are? known as Just Cheesy, the podcast. That's us. We'll be examining everything from fingerprints on cheese Whoa. to cheese-related lawsuits. Wow. And we might even tell a cheesy joke. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Stay tuned for episode 77, Law and Cheese, on Just Cheesy, the podcast. In last week's episode, we talked a little bit about DNA and cheese. Yeah. In this week's episode, we're going to find out something very interesting about the police and cheese. Whoa. There's an article on Vice.com that talks about cheese slices and fingerprints. Whoa. In 2020, it was pretty popular to do something to cars called cheesing. Cheesing? In December of that year, three teenagers admitted to the Pennsylvania State Police that they covered cars with cheese. Oh, no. The police didn't say how they caught the suspects. Really? So when Carrollton Police Department was trying to find the person responsible for cheesing a car, they didn't have a confession, oh. they didn't have a camera, oh, no. and they didn't have an eyewitness. Whoa. But they did have some cheese fingerprints. Holy cow. The Carrollton PD posted on their Twitter page that they learn something new every day. Yeah. Covering cars and cheese slices is apparently the new trend in criminal mischief. <laughs> and two, cheese slices produce great fingerprints. Yeah, they do. And they have a picture to prove it. Wow. I think we all remember the Florida woman who was suing Kraft for $5 million because Velveeta microwave mac and cheese took longer to make than they advertised. I remember. In an article on CNN.com, they go into details about the lawsuit. The lawsuit claims that the packaging on the microwavable single-serve cup of mac and cheese says it'll be ready in three and a half minutes. The lady says this is false and misleading. What? Her argument is that the number doesn't account for the four steps that are required to prepare the pasta. Oh, boy. You have to remove the lid and sauce pouch. Ooh. You add water. Huh. You microwave. You stir. Oh, boy. And this plaintiff claims that if she had known this ahead of time, she either would not have purchased it or she would have paid less. Oh, good grief. According to timesrecordnews.com, a woman is suing the government over a burn she got from nacho cheese. Oh, no. A Wichita Falls woman claimed that an employee at a bowling alley had actually poured hot nacho cheese on her finger. Oh, no. And she's suing for $95,000. Wow. She claims that she went to the snack bar... The employee brought over the cheese for the nachos. The cheese spilled on one of her fingers. Oh, no. But it was so hot that it started to burn immediately. And the attendant wiped off the cheese with a rag and the plaintiff's skin came off. Ew. Oh, no. Initially, she sought treatment at an emergency room yeah. where the wound was cleaned and bandaged. Okay. But the wound worsened. Oh, no. And this required more trips to the doctor. Whoa. And unfortunately, the injury ultimately required surgery. Holy cow. And because she couldn't use her hand, she lost her employment. Aww. So she's suing for her injuries, damages, and losses in wages. Whoa, that's so bad. Thankfully, this next one isn't very serious, but yeah. a judge ended up and dismissed this one. Okay. It was a $5 million lawsuit against McDonald's over a slice of cheese. Whoa. According to Boston25news.com, Two people submitted a lawsuit for $5 million Whoa. because they had ordered a quarter pounder with cheese without cheese, and they were upset oh, no. that they were charged full price for the quarter pounder with cheese without cheese. Oh, boy. Ultimately, the judge in the case said the two individuals failed to prove that they were harmed by paying more <laughs> for a quarter pounder without cheese. Yeah. McDonald's and the quarter pounder is not a sponsor. Nope. But if it was, the ad would go right here. Have you ever wanted to listen to the web? Yeah. Well, Newsly makes that possible. They do? They're an all-in-one audio super app for iOS and Android. Super app. You can listen to trending articles on the web on topics that you choose 
and get them read to you in a natural human voice. What kind of topics? Sports, cheese, tech, business, cheese, science. Cheese. I'm sure there's even cheese. Yay! They even have an entire section for podcasts. Are we there? Of course we are. Ooh. It's one of my new favorite podcast apps. They even have digital radio. Holy cow. Just go to www.newsly.me to download it free Whoa. or use the link in the description. If you use the promo code CHEESY, Cheesy. that'll get you one month free premium subscription. Yay, Newsly. Now, back to the podcast. An effort known as Cooperatives Working Together operated a herd retirement program that was accused of being a conspiracy to reduce milk output, oh, no. and that violated the law. Ooh. On a website called ButterAndCheeseClassAction.com, wow. they talk about the class action suit, and it looks like the filing deadlines, the last possible deadline was in 2022. Oh. The lawsuit accused National Milk Producers Federation, Agrimark, Dairy Farmers of America, and Lando Lakes. Oh, no. Currently, the website says the court has not decided who is right. Ugh. A while back in one of our episodes, we talked about this next lawsuit. According to golocalprove.com, the judge in a lawsuit claiming that TGI Friday's mozzarella stick snacks have no mozzarella can move forward. I remember. When we reported on this last time, we were able to find this particular bag of mozzarella sticks on Amazon. Yeah. We read the label and found that the mozzarella sticks didn't have any mozzarella. Right. But they had cheddar instead. Yeah. In December of 2022, on a website called lawanchor.com, in an article called Cheese Fraud Lawsuits Revealed, they talk about castle cheese. Cheese Company, Universal Cheese and Drying, and International Packaging, where they admitted to introducing misbranded cheese into the market. Wow. Their head executive pled guilty to the following, aiding the introduction of adulterated cheese products into interstate commerce. And according to this article, they face fines of up to half a million dollars wow. and even possible jail time. Wow. This article also talks about a lawsuit in New York. Wow. Another case of tainted mozzarella sticks. Really? Instead of mozzarella, they used starch. Ew. And that violated federal standards of identity for cheese. Uh, yeah. Kind of makes you wonder why they keep making false mozzarella. Just make the regular mozzarella and call it mozzarella. Right. I think we all remember the scandal that ensued over Parmesan cheese yeah. and the use of wood pulp or cellulose. Yeah. According to CNBC.com, Walmart was sued over suspected wood pulp in their cheese as well. Really? The great value Parmesan cheese says on the outside 100% grated Parmesan cheese. But apparently it contains about 10 to 20% cellulose. It does? Which is, as we know, a filler and it's an anti-clumping agent. Yeah. But it is derived from wood chips. Yeah. And of course, I think we all remember that Kraft Heinz was sued for a similar thing because they also claim to have 100% Parmesan cheese. Yeah. And they have a high percentage of the same wood filler cellulose. Yeah. And not only Kraft, but Castle Cheese had listed its product as 100% Parmesan, but the FDA found that some of its products cheese. did not contain a single trace of Parmesan cheese at all. Holy cow. Instead, they were using cheaper cheeses huh. and they mixed those with cellulose fillers. Good grief. Castle Cheese's owner faces up to a year in prison and a $100,000 fine. Wow. OSHA is suing Whole Foods over firing a whistleblower. Ooh. OSHA is the government's Occupational Safety and Health Administration. They're suing Whole Foods because they fired an employee. Oh, no. This employee had made a complaint. Oh. Apparently, there was sewage <laughs> leaking out of a bathroom and into the cheese department. <laughs> But Ew. they decided to just cover up the smell with air freshener. Oh, no. So the employee called the company's anonymous tip line. Yeah. No corrective actions had been conducted by the store. <gasps> so the worker contacted another manager. Yeah. And Whole Foods then fired the worker <gasps> for allegedly making false malicious statements. Oh, my gosh. Because management had not taken any steps to address the sewage contamination. Holy cow. OSHA asked the federal court to reinstate the former employee with full benefits, 
benefits, yeah. pay back wages, yeah. punitive damages, yeah. and compensatory damages to the employee. Duh. Expunge the employee's personnel file. Of course. And grant any other appropriate relief. Heck yeah. Now, thankfully, this was back in 2011, so hopefully they've cleaned up their act. Yeah. On a website called Just dash food.com like us like just cheesy <laughs> yeah kind of like us just food yeah. they have an article here that talks about an espionage lawsuit Ooh. there's a mexican cheese producer called cacique wow. it was founded in 1972 and this espionage lawsuit was filed in 1993 against stella foods inc Whoa. from filing to court took about six years Jeez. and the actual trial was two and a half months long the lawsuit claimed that Stella had actually retained the services of some of the former employees of Cacique in order to learn trade secrets. Oh, no. And they actually made a finding that the people that were hired and then went to uh, Stella, they were guilty of malice or fraud, Ooh. and they had induced a breach of contract. Oh, no. It even said that they misappropriated Cacique's trade secrets and engaged in unfair competition. Ooh. And when they won, they said, and I quote, this is a victory not just for Cacique, but for all companies who work hard to provide the public with a quality product and want to protect the secret processes they developed to make that product. I'm ready for a joke, Fondue. Okay. Okay. Why did the cheese go to court? I have no idea. Because it had a beef with dairy. <laughs> Get it? It had a beef with dairy? <laughs> I thought it was kind of cute. Yeah, I like it. And a little bit cheesy. Thanks for listening to Just Cheesy, the podcast, episode Thank 77, you. Law and Cheese. Dun, dun. If you have the opportunity and you haven't yet, please make sure to subscribe please. on any of the podcast platforms. Yeah. We look forward to talking to you next week. Stay cheesy, everybody.